Okay, uh, so I'm going to be looking over all of these. There's my pen. All right, um, I'm a bit confused. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Too much, actually. And there's a lot in your tool belt as the artist, and I think you're using stuff randomly. So he's got, <laughs> he's got his, 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 uh, like he's balding, so he's got the old man hair. But he's got this really young man face. He got, he's got a young man kind of scrawny neck. And he's got a really, really big um, Einstein kind of head. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's too much going on. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to focus this towards being a middle-aged, kind of late in the years man. Because he chose this really, really uh, significant style. Um, I mean, design tool right here, which is the the, the, the thinning hair, the, the little bit left over. So I'm just gonna match the head to the. I don't know, he's just like the most handsome old man I've ever seen in my life. I'm gonna match it to the, uh, sorry, I was covering my mouth. To the neck. Thicken the neck just a little bit, because this isn't us looking straight at the neck. The neck needs to be a little thicker to match the anatomy. Alright. I'm gonna take away those female beauty signatures right here that are making him look like a dreamboat. It's, it's not matching. Like, it's not matching. There's so many different things that can do. We make him a young man who's bald, or we can make him an old man, but we'd have to shrink his eyes. There's just so much happening. So, um, you know what? I think I'm just going to get rid of this. And I'm going to make him a young man. And we're going to talk about what you got to do to make something look old. There's just too much going on, baby. You got you to choose one thing. You got to stick to it. All right, so let's make him a really, really handsome kind of fella. He's kind of reminding me of Porco Rosso when he when he turned back into a human. The ear should be around here somewhere. Thicken that. Alright. Now that we've decided on the age, you've mixed the ages, now we have to talk about how you've mixed the genders. Um, you're bringing in way too much anime in here. and What I mean by that is in anime, you get to draw a really, really pretty guy and you get to get away with it. Because it's a cartoon. No one is taking the biology seriously. Everyone's just, you know, looking at the fact that there's the beauty triangle, with the with mixed in with muscles, and you know that that's typically what makes uh, teenage girls swoon. But it's not realistic. It's not a good design uh, crutch to have. So I'm just gonna shrink his eyes. He's still gonna look like a dreamboat. Trust me. He's just gonna look like a lot less like a woman wearing makeup. Eyes don't come that big, and when they do, it's like a freak show for us. We celebrate it. We're just like, wow, my God, so pretty. Prettiest woman in the world has the biggest eyes. Because when we have these kinds of proportions in the real world, we celebrate them. So trust me when I tell you, you don't have to go all the way toward full anime, full triangle, especially if you're painting a ma male to get the beauty. You will still see the beauty. If that beauty, after you've edited it, comes into the real world, we'll still think it's, it's handsome. It's just there's overdoing it. There's making it look like, you know, a young girl wearing makeup. And eyes don't really get big without makeup. I mean, they don't get freakishly large unless there's some sort of makeup to enhance it. Makeup uses shadows, eye shadows. These eye shadows enhance and bring in artificial shadows that respond to an artificial light source, making the eyes seem bigger, casting larger shadows. Big eyes have big shadows. This is why we use makeup on the crease, on the lower eyelid. That's why we uh, use lots of mascara and, and put more black on the eyeliner, because this all um, uh, promotes a larger looking eye. All right. So the largeness of the eyes before, we had all of that stuff here. We had the thick lash line, we had the big eye, we had the large upper and lower eyelids. It felt like it was enhanced by makeup, and it's kind of not helping the age. I also enlarged the nose just a little bit, so it seems a lot less, um, I guess, feminine. And I'm going to give the nose bridge a little bit of altitude uh, and height before, after, okay? Um... Now, a couple of other things that are stylized, which, which are very, very forgivable. Um, the length of the nose, and length, the distance between the lip and the mouth, and then, I mean, lip and the mouth, nose and the lip, and then the distance between the lower lip and the chin. These are all, like, elongated. You've elongated the proportions. Uh, so, 
what you have to do here is just decide do I want to um, I don't know I, I guess if I shrunk his head and made it less long he'd look very very young that mustache would not match now there's this version alright there's this version let's do another version where he looks a little older how do we make them how do we make him look older how do we make this person here look older first and most important thing is shrinking the eyes second most important thing you gotta you gotta write these down so you know you know the tools in your arsenal you know them you recognize them you don't randomly pull bullets out without matching them to the gun they belong to because it's just not gonna work you're gonna be you're gonna die <clears throat> all right shut up it's a rack of your fucking metaphors but enlarging the nose I'm gonna make the lips thinner okay he's still gonna look like a dreamboat alright but he's not gonna look like a a young kid with a false mustache with a with a, like a stick on mustache because that's how the other guy looked alright so I'm gonna sag the lower upper part of the eye a little bit more and I'm gonna show that on this side alright I'm gonna kinda make him look a little more tired the next thing I'm gonna do to make him look a little bit older so he can match his mustache is the laugh lines and the lower bags now look at how old he looks but he's still very handsome casting some more sharp shadows here it's the opposite when drawing children. Exactly. You want to exaggerate the um, the triangle as much as possible. All right. I'm gonna put one of those little saggy bits under the lip, the jowls, whatever they're called. <clears throat> and darken the pupils. This is something I'm gonna talk about a lot today. The whites of the eyes, not the pupils. The whites of the eyes. Please darken them. You guys make them too too light. All right. Another thing I'm going to do is there's we need more masculine in here, so I'm going to give it that, that Neanderthal brow. I'm not saying all men are Neanderthals, but uh, the bone structure, what testosterone does to a, a male face is uh, you got to memorize that as an artist and use that in your in your tools. I'm going to radially build this highlight here on the nose. So now, I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't shave off the little bits of hair growing on the side, but now you can add those in and they seem like they are uh, they match. But if I was him, I'd just shave this bit off and just be proud to be bold. Some women like, like bold men. <clears throat> but now it seems like he matches it, okay? Other things that you can do to age a face are the brows. You can add in more brow crease over here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm racy today. I don't know. Maybe it's just... I don't know. It's the heat. Oh my god, I swear I'm not making this any better. You shut the fuck up now. <laughs> People will literally like, take these as samples in a fucking song and then make a song out of them. I know. I know that's coming. Alright, as for how pretty he looks, I mean, you can still make his face this pretty. But I would I would thin out the darkness above his eyes because it's making him look a little too pretty. I would make it look a little bit a little bit more light so it feels like he actually is aging and his hair is white. All right, so there's definite changes I would make. So before very handsome, this is probably him when he was younger, and then when he aged. All right, let me just get rid of the. I don't even know if this helps honestly. <clears throat> so don't confuse ages and don't confuse genders. Um, we got we got rid of a lot of stuff, and uh, I don't know I don't even know how to say this. Um, copy layers. Uh, I just have to make extend it so you guys can look at the before and after. So I really want to show it off. Uh, merge down. Copy. Copy. Copy before, after. Okay, so this is before, after, and then 
the second after is when we added the age. All right, before. So now you have the ages distri like distributed evenly between each version. You have less feminine going on. Let me show you how feminine this was. I'm just going to edit some stuff out, and I'm going to show you how feminine this version was. Okay. All we would have had to do is just bring the lips a little bit closer. I mean, she looks like an older woman, but... You, ha you literally had a male, a female face wearing a prosthetic bald head and uh, and a fake mustache like if I just come on if I just uh, like gave her like a bob kinda looks like a woman if I closed off this length here so brought this a little bit closer extended this out made higher cheekbones and a less masculine jaw. I mean, the, the face looks a little bit like dreamy, like sexy time face. And this is giving some edge, like an age to him. It was a very, very feminine face. Um, so this is, I mean, see how masculine the jaw was? But yeah, uh, don't do that. Decide which gender you want to stick to and stick to it. All right, <clears throat> before, I mean before, after. So I'll save these if you want them. And uh, you can message me on Facebook if you want your copies back. Still looks like he's wearing a prosthetic. Uh, for this one, this one was posted a while ago, and I just wanted to show real quick the issue of having a lip that is too big. So you can have it this big, but don't make it that far away from the nose. It makes the face look older. See how much older she looks? Like this is the first thing that goes when you age, especially in women. The first thing that happens is your lips get further and further slowly away from your mouth. I mean away from your nose. So when we uh when we correct this, we notice her face is a lot cuter, a lot more youthful, a lot more young. The tools we're using have been used properly. We use the right bullets for the right kind of gun. By the way, guys, I'm ready to delete that fucking nose tutorial I painted, a, I mean, I did a million years ago about Bob and Steve. I'm going to delete it and make a new one. I'm so fucking sick of Bob and Steve. I don't know why I ever... <laughs> that was so weird. But, yeah. Before, after. Do you see the age? Do you see it? 15, 35. 15, probably even hitting 40. All right, this is the first thing that goes when we age. Okay. Dude looks like a lady. <clears throat> oh, welcome, Jonathan. Okay, so please remember this is important. Don't paint age signatures. If you're not familiar with the age signatures, then you sh and then that's what we need to be. If your if your images look like they're off, but you've done everything and you did the right triangle, but it still looks a little bit off, and you use the right kind of triangle per gender, I think the issue that's left is always the age confusion. If you, if it's not a gender confusion, it's an age confusion. If you've checked gender signatures and you've made sure you haven't used the wrong ones or misused them, and you pass that, and you're like, okay, this doesn't look like a man. It's a girl, obviously. What am I doing wrong that's making this look weird? Always check age signatures if you're not sure. Please write that back to me. Make sure that you're painting the right age. All right, I wanted to say this. I wanted to cover this because you're starting off and you're ready to go into, um, you know, details. Whoever this is, facestudy.png. Um, it is wrong to have this much lightness happen this early, especially in an area that is below the socket shadows, all right? There's only like the smallest little most sticky outy bit of the eyeballs that gets the white. Everywhere else is darker. The eyeball doesn't glow at night. It means it still has the capacity to be dark in a dark area. 
And since it sits underneath a, a generally depressed area, a recessed area, which is the eye socket, it's going to be darker. So your base tone should not look like this. If you want proof, ta-da, this is even actually darker than this because it's just under one big shadow. It's under a, an awning. All right. This value did not change. Take a look at this, this, this side of the slider. This is obviously lighter because it's in, the, it's in the, 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 the light spots. The eyeball is darker. Some of you are still working symbolically, so when you look at, um, you know, when you're drawing, and you, you remember, oh yeah, right, the eye of the, the white of the eye is white. It's just white, so I'm just going to put white. It's not white. <laughs> that's, that's the problem here. Do you guys remember it as white, so you remember it symbolically. You trust your memory over what your eye is actually seeing. Your eye is not seeing a white. This is white. And this is no man's land white. And this is what you remember. When I say eyeball, you probably see this shade in your head. Okay? This is wrong. This is dependent on predispositions of your, of your, of your bookkeeping and your visual library in your head. This is wrong. The eyeball should always start off with a lower, darker value. <clears throat> it's part of a large light environment, and it's part of a recessed area. Even though it sticks out just a little bit, only that farthest bit gets a little bit of light. Photographs that have pure white are edited photographs. It's not pure white. So please don't use pure white. Uh, over here we have another gender confusion, gender signature confusion, which is the width of the neck. That is way too thick for a female. To get your neck this thick, I mean, ask any bodybuilder. It just takes like six months to get your neck this thick. It's not going to work. And for a female, even harder. It takes her even longer. It takes us long to build the same kind of muscle as a man would. It's just how we work. We don't have the testosterone to push our muscles to that, to that extent. The way we're built is a lot more. I'm sorry, go ahead, Tumblr, you know, trigger, trigger those Tumblr warriors. But, uh, but this is how it is. These are the basic signatures. If you want to be a character design artist and you're trying to design a princess lady, witch lady, you don't give her the, like, um, like really, really, really built features. You don't give her an excessively large jawline. You don't give her um, uh, stronger jowls or, 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 or more rugged looking face. And you don't give her a thick neck. Because that's not the basic gender um, template that we're push pulling from, and we all pull from templates when we draw. So her neck is still thick. She still looks like she's strong. So if you're painting a warrior, okay, fine, but just not that thick. Now it looks like a really, really uh, feminine-looking man, like makeup-wearing, I want to look like a female man, you know? Honestly, all that was missing in the old one was, uh, was this. All right, now it looks like that actor that... Um, that's going to do Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. He did another uh, movie where he was a transgender. Uh, he this is exactly how he looked when he had uh, his, um, his sex change. <clears throat> okay. So wait. So flatten. Please don't confuse them. And remember, once you've tested your image, you're like, am I using any male signatures? Am I, using, am I mixing templates between male and female? and it still looks a little wrong, it's because you've confused the age, you're using wrong age pieces. Remember that we're painting the ideal. Uh, in the real world, if you're painting from a really, really solid reference and you're painting that reference very, very carefully, pixel for pixel, you're going to capture the organic, flaw-ridden face of the real world, which we all have. <laughs> so uh, as the artists, we are, we are the, um, we celebrate the ideal. We have to memorize the ideal. Once we memorize the ideal, we will be proportionately sick of it, and we will start to deviate on our own and making our own choices for a more organic, flawed, beautiful, asymmetrical face. But until then, if you want to get hired, if you want to make some money, you can't paint um, away from the template. You got to start off somewhere. You got to start memorizing something. And instead of going out and memorizing every possible combination of faces, learn the basic one that we all celebrate as beautiful as ideal. It doesn't always have to be the ideal one that we're using. If we're painting a witch, we probably will bring a very villainous face to her, which we've covered recently. If we're painting a wizard, uh, we probably give him nice big Santa Claus eyes, if he's a good wizard. 
and uh, and so and a long white beard. I mean, it's just how it works. It's how we do it. Um, uh, they don't. They they didn't cast Gandalf to to anyone but Ian McKellen because that's exactly how he looked. He looked like a really really nice Miss Santa Claus type type template we were working from, which is the exact same template that we're working from when we think about Dumbledore, when we think about um, I'm not sure if there are any more that I know other than those two great wizards. Um, I don't know other good awesome wizards. Uh, if we're if we're drawing a really really strong male, really big bulky male. We're going to work from the uh, brute template, which is really, really thick neck, small head, large jawline. So more bronze than brains. Brahms? Is it brawn or brawn? It's brawn. Uh, so a smaller head, a larger jaw, bigger nose, probably asymmetrical from being punched so much. So these are templates. If you're not aware of them, it's very unwise for you to think you can just deviate from them at this point. Very, very unwise. Memorize them first. All right. Okay, this one here, um, completely different. So I'm trying to cover everyone's. Um, is a little too the head. The, the face is a little too small for the head. Excuse me. <laughs> so I'm just trying to fit the. There you go. Locks right in. I just wanted to fit this in. You're painting with a very very textured brush, so I'm going to try to match it if I can, but there we have it. I know a lot of you refute, I know a lot of you comment on my videos with with a lot of hate saying, yo man, what if I wanted to paint a girl with a really thick neck? What, what's it to you? <clears throat> it doesn't work. Uh, you will have painted, that's exactly what you will have painted, a girl with a, an unusually thick neck. And people will comment on it, and it will be that thick neck character in your in, in the story, and it will just be that. But a good art director knows how strong it is, knows how good it is, to pull from the tropes. It's it's a, it's pre-made, the great epic, whatever it is, wherever we've seen it in orations and stories and and novels, the great epic, even the great epic itself, which is the big story, whatever that big story might be. Everyone pulls from it. The Iliad pulled from it. The Lord of the Rings pulled from it. Just the typical bad guy, typical good guy, typical helpers of the good guy, typical helpers of the bad guy. Um, these are the basic templates we're pulling from. And if the great epic used it, <clears throat> then uh, we're going to be using it too. It's unwise not to know what your tools are. And again, when you're wise enough and you've spent a long time studying the tropes, by all means, break them. Give us something new. God knows the epic is boring as fuck. It repeats the same old tropes over and over again. So please do bring us something new, but you can't unless you know what, what's what been used. <clears throat> Alright, so before, after. The face was very, very big uh, for the head. Um, kind of seemed zoomed in. Uh, you know those things that you can stick your head into in like a theme park and it's got like a cutout for the head and it's got like a funny picture on the end of it? Like a gorilla ripping a kid's head off or something. This kind of seems like there should have been a... That's the only way this wouldn't have made sense to me, if there was a cutout here and the person was sticking their head in. It just did not belong to that head and that density. But before, after, we kind of just shrunk it. Maybe we can enlarge it just a little bit more, just to make sure I'm staying as close as possible to your version. There we go. Before, after. Before was still a, v a bit large. Um, the face is also a little bit rounded, but that's just the body weight. Oh yeah, that's another thing not to confuse. Body weight. If you're gonna, you know, test whether or not you've confused the genders, confuse the ages, and then confuse the types of body weight between the face and the body. Sometimes there's that baby face that's really curved and it just looks like this, even though you weigh 110 pounds. Sometimes you just got a chubby face. Uh, but again, the tropes. Remember the tropes. Once you learn them, you'll know when you're breaking the rules. <clears throat> and you have to learn the rules to break them. That's one of the mantras in here. Uh, this one, uh, this one here, I wanted to cover again and more age issues. So you've got the age right here, indicating that she's old. You even got some, I don't know what these are called, liver spots or something. We need to continue this. The age, the exact same signatures you use for designing a villain are what you use for designing an old person. There's a reason why we've crossed those two over. It's because the lack of life, kind of like the dying look, the 
aged look. When we draw Zeus, we don't draw him as a frail old man. He wasn't described as an infirmed old man. He was described as young and youthful. When we think about Aphrodite, we don't give her wrinkles, because that's what the trope, the greater epic, told us about her. She was a symbol of beauty, so we use youth to represent the beauty. Years and years of gravity pulling and pulling at the face caused it to sag down, so these sags eventually turn into folds, and these folds turn into wrinkles, and the short and the, your brush shrinks as that happens. Jowls also need a little bit of work. So you had the young face going on. You, you're very good with drawing a young face. When it came to this, you started to have trouble. Now, lips can be a little bit thicker for older ladies. It just depends on their genetics, I guess. The nose can look like this with a bunch of plastic surgery. But typically, um, the nose would need to get a little bit larger. And that's only because it also sags down. The nose doesn't just stay upright and perky your whole life. It sags down as well when you get older. And then the lips get a little thinner. So we have to increase that distance between the mouth and the nose. Whoa! That was funny. <clears throat> Density goes all the way up. Brush shrinks. We have to increase that density. I'm just going to use the the one that pushes them apart. And she'll look older. And then finally, that little bit, whoa, that little bit over here is where that those jowls sink down and start sagging outside of the neckline, downward. <clears throat> okay, so that's one way to age her. She looked a little bit young, like a young woman with, with painted on crow's feet. Right, but considering the extent of these crow's feet, she looked very old, probably in her 60s, 70s. So we have to match the face. She's still very beautiful. She still has that triangle going on. She didn't lose it. And probably she's always been beautiful, but when you get older, you can't ignore these typical areas where age, age uh, becomes obvious. All right. Now, there are people in the real world who age and they don't even look old, but, I mean, Helen Mirren is famous for the fact that she still looks good for her age, and all of these are still in her face. They're all still there in her face, all these signatures. The laugh line, the crow's feet, probably a lot of makeup has happened in here, but those little saggy bits at the bottom, the distance between the nose and the mouth, the shrinking of the eyes, the largeness of the nose... <clears throat> I mean, where's one that she's not smiling in? The, the eye bags, the sagness of the upper eyelid, which you had. Distance between the nose and the mouth, and then the jowls here, just sagging down. I mean, she's still beautiful, but she's old. How do we show that as the designers, as the people who design characters, as the character artist? How do we des design this? Just don't mix age, don't mix gender. And don't mix um, uh, weight, body weight, unless you are specifically trying to draw someone androgynous, Benjamin Button type dude. I mean, that was freaky. Uh, but that's the point, that he was old at a young age, and he just kept getting younger. He look, kept looking younger as he got older. Uh, unless you're deliberately trying to break these rules for the character design that is required of you for the story that you're working for, Unless you are deliberately trying to create an androgynous character, a character that is, um, you know, I don't know why you would ever need to confuse body weight, but I don't know. You, you would have to have, it would, it would need, there would be a need for it. But until then, please follow the tropes. Uh, for this piece, uh, I just want to talk about basic rotation. This eye is too far out. You're forcing us to see it. Because of the many times you've painted a head-on face, kind of the only way we you know how to draw a face at the, t at the current time is if you paint it head-on. So rotation kind of escapes us when we spend a whole, you know, youth drawing uh, or, you know, a whole student life drawing head-on faces. We forget to compress and we forget to hide pieces behind the other. So I'll show you in a second where that's happening. Just looking at the navigator. 
The nose will start hiding parts of the eye. We won't see the inner corner of the eye. This won't happen anymore. Um, because I'll show you in Portrait Studio in a second. Because this is a three-dimensional world, and when something rotates, eventually something else will stand in its way. So take a look at this eye, what happens to it. Not only does it shrink horizontally, so it starts to get thinner. Take a look at what's happening to this eye. Keep your eye here. And take a look how the nose starts to hide it. The inner corner is gone by now. We, we don't see it anymore. It's hidden. And this kind of three-quarter view, which was what you used, the, the entire inner sixth of the eye is starting to hide away. Well, the shadow is helping as well, but uh, the nose eventually just starts getting in the way completely. And then all you would see here is just some lashes. And then eventually we're looking at the side of the face. This is rotation. This is compression. This is our ability to rotate something three-dimensionally in our minds. And also at the same time imagine how that object could shrink into the distance um, because of our familiarity with the rules of depth. How an object in the distance gets smaller or hides behind another object. Even if at their, at the, they're at the same distance from us, one would still have to be in front of the other. All right, unless everything is right beside each other in the world. There's no such thing as a world where everything is right beside each other and there's no depth. That's a two-dimensional world. In a three-dimensional world, things get in the way of other things. I guess that's why the world sucks. <clears throat> All right, so before really being forced, it's like you were unwrapping the skin. And then over here, it feels like it's tucked right where it should be for the, for the rotation to happen successfully. <clears throat> So, I'm just fixing the forehead so it can match as well. Before, after. Um, any questions? I feel like it's a waste of time if you don't yet get the feeling with digital art. Uh, when it looks like your art doesn't seem right, that means your your eyes have improved on picking out what the mistakes are in your drawing. Yes, your eyes know. Everyone, even if you ask someone who has no idea what art is, never drawn a picture in his life, and you ask them, is there, is there something, does this look wrong to you? They'll say, yeah, it does. They see proportions every single day. They'll know when something is a little bit off, especially if you're rendering it completely. And the more that you render, the more the mistakes will stick out like a sore thumb. <clears throat> Um, you only suck if you quit. <laughs> yes. The, the suckiest drawing is the one that you never did. Drops mic. I'm just going to drop my pen. <laughs> Such an idiot. Okay. Alright, here's another thing where we're confusing age signatures, and this is from the same artist as before. I'm trying to give myself more space this time. Just tucking that in, closing that distance. We're confusing age. It's not good. Alright, before, after. There's a reason why um, uh, it's, it, it, these, are, these are here. It's to help us design. When we're drawing an old lady, but she has all of the cute signatures. Um, Star Wars episode 7. Like, unless you really need to confuse these gender signatures and these age signatures together and just make it all a messy muck. Like, unless you have to, don't do it. But here's an episode where it, old lady. This is where it, um, this is where they did it. They gave her, like, pure baby face. Like, pure baby face. But the distance between this and this, the thinness of the lips, the wrinkles, the smallness of the eyes, even though she had full triangle, almost looked like a baby the age is still there. Like, unless you really have to do it. Unless she is an, an alien person. And this wouldn't happen on human faces. It just doesn't. The nose is so tiny, so that also helps extend the distance between the lips. She feels like an old lady. She feels like an alien, but an old lady alien. It'd be weird if they removed the wrinkles, then we'd be like, oh, that's just the race. They all just look old. <clears throat> Unless you have to use a baby face and the and the old lady 
stuff together, which is what you kind of did here, but she really didn't, it didn't really seem like you were a, facing a conundrum in character design as these, as these guys were. These guys were facing a conundrum while they were designing her. We're supposed to make her look like a cute alien race, but she's supposed to be like 150 years old. How the fuck are we supposed to do that? You know, and then the art director, being the genius that he was, came in and said, okay, we do this, do this, do this, do this. All right. Don't break them unless you have to, unless the design or the writing or whatever calls for it. You don't need to do this, so you shouldn't have to. And a wise artist, an advanced artist, knows if I don't have to break the age rule, I'm not gonna, because my painting will, will, will benefit for that. My, paint, my painting will be stronger for it. <clears throat> All right? So, any questions? Any any arguments? I love it when a student argues back. Yes, a cute alien baby old lady. <laughs> that's what she was. That's the design. I guess that's the, just the race they had. Um, she had to be an old version of that race, so it works when you do it right. <clears throat> but yeah, any questions from you guys? Any any arguments? Any refutations? If that's a word. How do you improve on drawing realistic portraits like the one you usually critique? And how do I see the flaws in my drawings and fix the proportions? Some stuff is about a matter of mileage, and that's the easy answer. Just draw more, and you'll eventually figure it out. Other stuff would require you to measure, uh, would require you to take a look at your tools, the storyline, are you following the storyline, um, if, if it's a de character design that you're focusing on. Um, seeing the flaws can happen in all kinds of facets of design that's not always fundamental. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you just shaded it wrong and the features are fine. That happens a lot, by the way, guys. That happens with a lot of students. They draw really, really good proportions, a really pretty looking person, but they shade it wrong and then they overcompensate by throwing in more contrast and it just gets like a messy mess. <clears throat> it's, an, it's an awesome balance if you want to, to really improve Dank Meme. <laughs> it's a it's an awesome balance when you stay spend some time in your week studying still lifes. Now a lot of artists that you follow probably do lots and lots of still lifes, but the equivalent of that in our community is just form studies. Just studying form for form's sake. Um, sphere, cylinders on an open gray background, uh, practicing depth. All of that also happens in a still life. You learn about depth, you learn about textures. You learn about uh, colors that once a week, plus some basic anatomy diagrams of an eye, how, how, it, how you can draw it so that it blinks, how you can draw a nose so that it actually looks like it can smell, how do you draw a mouth so it looks like it can bite and chew and, and, uh, and talk. Um, then there's actual anatomy, so looking at different, not anatomy, but like more uh, character design, uh, design, actual design principles. So different kinds of characters, the different tropes, all of that stuff you should also spend time on. All of that combined as you're leveling up in all of those fields, you'll see the mistakes sooner than you ever did if you just waited for the next time you did a masterpiece to, to learn a lesson or two. Studies are underrated, so all I can say to you, Dank Meme, is more studies, and not just any study, focused studies, studies that, will ha that, ha that are designed in a way where they improve efficiently. They, they, they make you learn faster for the less amount of work. It's not smart on your, on your part as students to just do masterpieces all day and, uh, and expect to improve. I used to do probably two masterpieces a year, maybe three, and I would wait for each and every single time to improve. Every, yeah, it got better because I waited way too long for the next time I drew. But my art took a three, like a 180, not 360, that'd be stupid, 180 um, when I started doing more focus studies. I started doing form studies, which made me break down basics of form, no matter what kind of object I was looking at. A face, uh, a desk top with a, with a cup on it that I was trying to draw, it, it all turned into a landscape for me, because I studied right. So that's how you improve better and start seeing the mistakes in your work. You have to expose yourself to the fundamentals that could have been the mistake. You won't see them if you haven't studied them. That's how you teach your eye to see them. <clears throat> um, what's the button you use to copy, merge all layers and keep the original layers? 
I'm not sure what you're saying. There's no button here like that. There's a couple of functions you can do to achieve that, but not one. What's the buttons you use? I guess you said buttons. I don't know. To merge all layers. I use the history stats. I go back all the way in the history. And then I copy the thing that I want posted in the history. If that's what you're saying. Any other questions, guys? How do you create good expressions and, and faces? Uh, that's a massive question. Um, I have I have a video on that, Jeannie. If you look in my video history, I have a video on expressions. What what goes into expressions? Which features you have to move to make the expression happen? Do you have any tips on profile face drawing? Uh, Marcus says. Um, remember that the eye isn't fully, so, no, all right, that's weird size, but okay, uh, remember that the eye isn't fully, uh, visible, so, whoa, pixels, so we don't draw the eye like this, which some of you might do, we draw the eye like this, And then the brow curves, because it curves along the brow bone. Alright, so this is one big tip I have. The nostril also, not like this, or like this, but upward. The nostril moves upward. Upward angle. The lip, not like this, ever. Alright, because then you'll just be strong, smiley faces all the time, unless you deliberately put something to make it not smile. It's never a straight line. It's downward, because the fat is in the way. These are my tips. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. They use layer when doing portraits. I try not to, Richard. This, this, should we perfect male and female portraits before drawing androgynous neutral ones? Yes, Sarah, or else you'll always be accidentally draw, drawing androgynous faces for the rest of your life. And I don't know what this recent movement is, this asexual sexuality. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not commenting on anyone's sexuality, but recently artists have just been... You know, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the movement is with these millennial kids. I don't know. But no one seems to be able to decide which gender they are, <clears throat> which is okay, right? Discover yourselves. I'm proud of you guys for wanting to escape so society and its definitions for you, but uh, eventually you're going to have to choose one, I think, um, if you want to procreate. If not, you don't have to choose one. But, um, but yeah, please remember that just it's not an offense on you and your, and your view on life and your perspective on the opinion of your gender when I say stop at drawing androgynous people. There's so many people who commented on the video, they're like, well, I'm, I'm a female-looking man, and I don't, I'm not talking about you. I don't know who you are. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about art. I'm talking about what we know. So as much as, 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 uh, as you want to, for, people, to everyone, for everyone to be androgynous, it's not, it doesn't work like that. The world is so diverse and so full of different versions of male and female. Us, as the artists, are responsible for learning all of that. And we can't go around escaping this by drawing androgynous characters, because all that is proving that you, it's proving you as the weaker artist. You want to draw androgynous characters for the rest of your life, then remember that that's a limitation on your part. You are deliberately weakening your, your design power. All right? You won't be able to draw a big Brahm character, and you won't be able to, you, and all you'll be able to draw is just the, the androgynous female or male. <clears throat> maybe I'm a female and maybe I take steroids. The problem is that, <laughs> you know what, do you, do you. Just remember, when you have to draw, you can't do you anymore. You have to do something else. Unless you're trying to create a, a self-portrait, then you have to copy um, whatever's happening there. <clears throat> All right. I've been using encyclopedias to help me with the shapes. Thank you. I'm gender fluid and totally understand why you teach us the tropes. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's no comment on your actual perspective on the world and your perspective on your image of as a gender. It's you have to, if you're an artist, you gotta learn them. It's it's unfortunate, yeah, but we have to we have to learn the ideals. We have to learn the basic Barbie face. We have to learn the witch face. We have to learn the demon face. We have to learn the angel face. We have to, or else we won't be able to design for squat and we'll we'll live on the streets. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye bye.